Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more coming uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so if you do consider a drop your likes and if you do consider a uh, subscribe to the channel um, as always. So lots to negotiate um, on this uh, video today but the first talk of the development um, I'm going to give you an update on uh, uh, busy in regards uh, to Bruno Fernandes um, as they have uh, been uh, giving you um, an update um, on a regular uh, basis um, and all that so I do believe um, it's looking very very imminent that Bruno Fernandes probably you know, will be um, our third signing uh, this summer, I do expect Bruno Fernandes uh, you know, move to Manchester United you know, fully secured uh, by uh, the end um, of this week, um, I do uh, presume um, and all that because I think actually you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is keen um, on making a um, uh, move uh, to Manchester United, now reports um, are basically you know, saying that you know we have um, held a um, more um, extensive talks uh, with Bruno Fernandes um, agent um, in London you know uh, this week obviously you know over getting um, a deal uh, fully uh, finalised there uh, for Bruno Fernandes now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, has blatantly made it clear you know he wants a deal secured for Bruno Fernandes um, at the earliest um, opportunity but he did say you know he wants uh, Bruno Fernandes arrival uh, to be complete uh, by uh, the first term um, of July but actually you know reflecting back uh, last month you know saying he uh, said uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know wants the majority of our transfer business uh, completed uh, by uh, the first term um, of July um, and all that so but Sanchi did say you know we're not prepared to pay um, up to 60 or 70 million pounds uh, for Bruno Fernandes obviously you know, this is what uh, Sporting Lisbon um, are currently uh, demanding um, and all that um, it also says that, uh, that Liverpool um, have been in negotiation with Bruno Fernandes um, agent um, in London um, over an improved um, offer um, and all that because obviously you know, Liverpool have inquired um, about um, his services obviously it got reported out uh, last week saying that Liverpool had lodged a bidding of around uh, 45 million euros obviously you know, that equates uh, to around uh, 40 million um, in pounds sterling but obviously you know, that's going to be nowhere near enough you know, to convince uh, Sporting has been uh, to offload him and I don't think Liverpool um, are prepared uh, to pay um, up to uh, £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his services and obviously we do know that Tottenham have inquired um, about um, his services because obviously as I reported uh, the other week uh, last week you know that Tottenham had met up uh, with Bruno Fernandes um, agent um, and all that because they had uh, stepped up their interest so Bruno Fernandes um, agent you know was in London having negotiations uh, with Tottenham because obviously Tottenham wants to do transfer activity this summer because they haven't done any transfer activity um, in the last uh, couple of uh, windows like I said the last player they signed was Lucas Mora back in uh, January uh, 2018 um, and all that and obviously I'm Richard Pochettino um, is going to want uh, back in uh, this summer obviously Tottenham are in the market for the replacement for Christian Eriksen because obviously Christian Eriksen and that um, is linked to a move uh, to Real Madrid and Tottenham do know how imperative it is you know you know, if you know Christian Eriksen leaves you know to currently uh, find um, an adequate uh, replacement for him I think Tottenham are closing on getting a you know are closing on getting Tanguen Dumbele according to recent reports uh, for around uh, £60 million pounds, um, and all that but I think actually you know, Bruno Fernandes um, um, it favours um, a move uh, to Manchester United um, over Tottenham and all that because I think you know Bruno Fernandes feels as though it will be beneficial uh, for his career you know if he does uh, make uh, the move uh, to Manchester United but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, earlier on this week um, instructed Ed Woodward you know to speed up um, a deal you know to currently uh, sign uh, Bruno Fernandes um, and all that and Bruno Fernandes did say you know he's attracted to the history um, and mystique um, of Manchester United but quite a few teams um, have inquired um, about um, his services we do know it's been mainly Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that have been uh, battling out uh, for um, his services it, it looks very very likely um, at one point that's it we're going to get a deal uh, concluded uh, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes and all that uh, but obviously it confirmed that City um, adopted out of the race they're no longer in there now uh, for Bruno Fernandes so potentially now since City have pulled out you know Tottenham have entered the race obviously you know Liverpool and that um, have entered the race but you know we've been considered the favourites you know to sign uh, Bruno Fernandes um, at least uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks you know according to Ebola uh, the Portuguese uh, press even though it did report from the Liverpool Echo um, a couple of days ago you know he, they were basically explaining uh, they basically said you know Liverpool Liverpool um, are the heavy favourites uh, to currently uh, sign uh, Bruno Fernandes. But I'm very, very convinced you know, we can get this uh, deal um, over the line uh, sometime uh, this week um, and all that. But I do really, really like him um, a lot. You know, he is um, only uh, 24 uh, years um, of age. He is uh, a prolific attacking midfielder because he's a uh, primarily um, attacking uh, midfielder. Um, he has been um, at Sporting Lisbon um, a couple of seasons. He scored 31 goals uh, for Sporting uh, Lisbon uh, last season. So, like I said, we do. I think we need two uh, new um, additions um, in that midfield um, and all that. You know, if Pog believes, obviously, we're going to need um, a replacement. Uh, Varanda Herrera but I do believe Bruno Fernandes would be uh, the adequate uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba but I said we need someone who can score goals in that midfield someone who can rejuvenate uh, the team um, and all that someone who can add depth um, in our midfield and Bruno Fernandes um, is, you know, is definitely uh, the right uh, solution um, and all that um, he's been a sport and he's been a couple of seasons like I said you know, he hasn't really uh, played uh, to the highest level um, as yet um, obviously Bruno Fernandes did spend the majority um, of his career um, in, it in Italy you know, uh, when he was younger and, um, and all that you know, with the likes of Sampandaria um, and Undenese um, and all that so 
you know, he is uh, doing uh, really, really well. Um, he's still under contract with Sport in Lisbon um, until 2023. Um, I think his initial uh, release cost um, is around uh, £86 million. Pounds. So I think Bruno Fernandes is definitely you know, going to be uh, leaving Sport in Lisbon. You know, that's uh, very, very imminent. So I do believe he will be playing um, his trade uh, next season uh, with Manchester United um, and all that. But like I said, he'll win his um, goals that we do need um, in that midfield um, and all that. You know, he'll add depth um, in our midfield. His movement um, is really, really good. And yeah, I, I, like I said, you know, he, he will be a fantastic uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. But like I said, it's very imperative that we get this deal over the line for Bruno Fernandes because obviously he's been one of our main priority targets now uh, for quite uh, some time um, and all that. But like I said, it's reported out uh, this week, you know, we've been in more negotiation with Bruno Fernandes' um, agent, um, obviously, you know, over getting um, a deal uh, finalised. It said we, we'd obviously met up with his um, agent uh, last week, you know, to discuss, you know, Bruno Fernandes' uh, potential uh, switch uh, to Old Trafford. But it only said last week we was only willing to pay up to £49 million because we was not willing, you know, to pay, you know, what uh, Sporting has been uh, we're currently uh, demanding. But I just think we should pay, you know, 60 or £70 million pounds, uh, for Bruno Fernandes. You know, look what we did last summer. You know, we paid, what, £50 million pounds, uh, for Fred, you know, looking at one of our um, our most um, expensive uh, signings and all that. And, you know, he hasn't done done really much um, at Manchester United. You know, he hasn't really got a fantastic pedigree. You know, he was a great player, you know, um, at Shakhtar Donetsk uh, with Fred, but he hasn't really replicated this um, at Manchester United. To be fair to Fred, you know, he, towards the back end um, of last season, you know, he did prove himself. You know, he did hold his line in that uh, really, really well. But I still don't know um, if he's, if he's uh, the long-term uh, solution. And Fred is nowhere near in the same calibre um, or level um, as Bruno Fernandes. And we paid uh, £50 million to him. So I, I do believe we should just pay £60 or £70 million pounds, uh, for Bruno Fernandes, you know, to currently uh, get uh, the deal um, over the line uh, for him. But like I said, will be a fantastic uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Popper. But like I said, Tottenham, uh, you know, stepped their interest up in him, uh, you know, last week. Obviously, like I said, you know, they'd been in uh, negotiations uh, with their current uh, agent. But we obviously, you know, notified, you know, uh, you know we notified uh, Sport and Lisbon, you know, that we need a bit more time. Because obviously we told them that we want to get the deal over the line for Amman Saka first. And then we will step up um, our interest um, in Bruno uh, Fernandes. But like I said, will be a fantastic replacement uh, for Paul Popper. So, like I said, and he's only 24 years of age and he's still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development um, in him. Um, as uh, Bruno Fernandes. Now, um, obviously, um, we do know Anwam Saka um, is going to be um, our second uh, signing uh, this summer. Um, obviously, you know, that's uh, very, very um, imminent, um, of course. I don't think it's been uh, made um, fully um, official um, as yet. Uh, but I think Anwam Saka now um, has completed um, his medical. I think he completed the second part um, of his uh, medical uh, yesterday and all that. And like I said, I'm really, really looking forward, you know, to um, Anwam Saka, you know, coming in. Um, obviously, it broke out from the BBC a couple of days ago or a day or two ago, whenever it was, you know, signing, you know, and the BBC is a very reliable source, you know, they said, you know, Manchester United um, have reached um, an agreement, uh, have reached an agreement with Crystal Palace to sign Anwan Bissaka, and reportedly we've agreed a deal worth around uh, fifty uh, million pounds. Manchester United have paid forty-five million um, up front. There is five million um, in add-ons included, which does rise it to around uh, fifty million pounds. Obviously, you know the add-ons um, are obviously you not know, based um, on the appearances um, and all that. That's what the the add-ons um, are based on uh, the appearances. And um, yeah, I'm very very um, excited um, about this. Um, obviously, he's, he's obviously now um, our fifth uh, most um, expensive sign. In the, the only players that cost more than Amwam Saka is Pogba, Lukaku, Fred and uh, Angela de Maria. So he's um, our fourth, fifth uh, most um, expensive uh, signing. He has uh, agreed um, a five-year deal with an option of a third year. So it's potentially um, a six-year uh, deal uh, worth around uh, £80,000 a week. So also he's got a big uh, pay rise. Um, so obviously, you know, he's got um, a big uh, pay rise um, on his salary um, as Amwam Saka. A big pay rise um, on his uh, salary because he was only on around uh, £10,000 a week uh, with Crystal Palace. And obviously, with Crystal Palace's lowest player player um, in their first team squad so Amman Saka has been given around um, £70,000 uh, pay rise um, and all that but like I said I'm very very glad now we have uh, got uh, the deal you know we've got the deal uh, fully uh, finalised because you know we had been negotiating a fee you know with Crystal Palace um, at least uh, for the last uh, three weeks um, and all that um, obviously you know we previously you know um, had uh, two bids you know turned down uh, for Amman Saka obviously you know the previous bid we had turned down was £50 million. obviously we offered £35 million up front obviously it was £15 million, um, in add-ons um, and all that but obviously you know Crystal Palace turned this down because obviously you know, they didn't like the structure of the offer and obviously the first bid we had turned down uh, was around uh, £40 million pounds, um, and all that but Crystal Palace you know, basically made it clear you know, they wanted around £45 million up front or uh, £50 million pounds, um, up front um, and all that but Anwan Saka blatantly made it clear you know, he does want to uh, join uh, Manchester United uh, this summer and all that but I think he'll be fantastic for Manchester United you know, he is predominantly um, a right back I think he will um, improve as you know uh, defensively and like I said I don't think we've had a good defensive right back you know, since yeah, we had uh, the likes um, of Gary Neville um, and all that so I think you know that 
that there's there has been problems at that full back position, you know, at least there for the last uh, couple of uh, years, um, and all that. But Aman Masaka, um, he's only had 21 uh, years of age, so obviously he's got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him. And I do believe, you know, he can be our full back uh, for the next uh, decade, and he's going to fit Oligan and Solskjaer's transfer strategy, you know, perfectly because obviously, you know, Oligan and Solskjaer you know, wants to de develop a squad um, of young, hungry, um, homegrown uh, talent, um, and all that. So he obviously, you know, he does uh, fit that, you know, does um, Aman Masaka. I think we are moving away from the policy, you know, of signing uh, them well um, established uh, players uh, this summer um, and all that. But we do know Oligan and Solskjaer is planning, you know, to build um, an ambitious uh, squad. Um, but yeah, very, very happy, you know, with the um, Anwan Bissaka uh, signing. Like I said, so far he had spent the um, entirety um, of his career with Crystal Palace. Um, obviously, you know, has been a Crystal Palace player uh, since uh, the age um, of 11. Obviously, initially when Anwan Bissaka, you know, was younger, um, he, he was actually, you know, um, an out-and-out -out winner um, and all that. But as he was developing, um, obviously, you know, he got reverted um, as a full-back um, and all that, you know, due to um, his tenacity. He only made his senior day before Crystal Palace um, in February um, last year um, and all that. And obviously, you know, last season established himself um, as a first-team uh, regular. And um, yeah, and I think reflecting on his impressive performances last season I think um, he got named uh, Crystal Palace uh, Player of the Year and he still did have uh, three years uh, left um, on his contract uh, with uh, Crystal uh, Palace but I think Anwar Masaki you know, will be a fantastic replacement for Valencia I think he'll be a fantastic um, upgrade uh, to Ash Young and I think, think he'll be a fantastic uh, cover-up uh, for uh, Diego Ardella but I do believe he will succeed uh, Manchester United you know, he's uh, proven in the Premier League his defensive capabilities are um, very very good he has uh, got a uh, great potential so I'm really really looking forward to him forward to him you know currently you know coming in um and Wan Masaka. So we do know now he's our second signing this summer. He's our second signing of course um under the Oligan and Solskjaer um, Mirari, um, and all that but I think I read in the Manchester Evening News was it the other day and you know they were basically saying you know that Solskjaer is targeting um, another uh, six more players uh where obviously you know when Awan Masaka to Manchester United is fully done. I don't think it's been made fully official as yet. I think it's been uh, set to be made um, official you know sometime uh, today um, and all that I thought it was going to be yesterday it was going to be made official but I think it will be definitely you know um official uh, today day. Um, as you all know, we have got Daniel James already on the board for £18 million. Like I said, we've got Awan Masaka now for £50 million. So that takes Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's next spender to around £68 uh, million pounds, uh, so far uh, this summer. But I think now maybe the club, you know, need to orchestrate on, you know, currently selling players, you know, to gen generate funds and help her uh, rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that. Because obviously a lot of reports were reflecting out uh, last week saying that we've only been given £100 million pounds, uh, to spend uh, this summer. And it did provide a reason why it said we've only been given £100 million pounds, uh, to spend uh, this summer. Because obviously, you know, we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer uh, for next season. I thought it's an, initially we'd been given around uh, 200 odd million pounds uh, to spend, but we do not obviously 100 million pounds. Um, is nowhere near enough, you know, to address the deficiencies in the squad. It's nowhere near enough, you know, to get the number of players there uh, that we want um, and all that. And if that is to be true, uh, you know, we've only got around uh, 30 odd million pounds uh, left now uh, to spend on a central defender. You know, a couple of new additions in that midfield, a right winner and a striker. And obviously, you know, we're not going to be able to do that. You know, over 30 uh, odd uh, million pounds. So I think the club, you know, do need to, you know, now orchestrate on selling uh, players um, you know to help raise funds and you know uh, you know rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that um, but I do probably expect around uh, four or five players anyway you know to uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer so potentially Diamond and Rojo you know they're two players that's, that are looking very imminent to leave Manchester United this summer so I think we can generate around 25-30 million pounds uh, for their uh, departures because obviously Matteo Diamond and Marcus Rojo have both um, enjoyed difficult times um, at Manchester United um, obviously with Pogba um, and Lukaku you know they've, they're heavily linked to you know they're relentless linked to a move away from Old Trafford Pogba's linked to a Madrid and Juventus obviously Lukaku's linked to a move to Inter Milan you know I think if we do sell them both I think we can generate at least them around the you know £200 million pounds for the departures um, of Paul Pogba um, and Ron Lewer, Lukaku um, and all that um, but like I said you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to bring um, at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the squad um, and all that like I said he is planning uh, to build um, an ambitious uh, squad you know quite a few people have said you know we should be a uh, sensible uh, with our uh, recruitment uh, this summer but like I said it's going to be you know, hard for us to get, you know, the players there that we want. It's going to be hard for us to attract players to elite level because obviously, you know, we're not in a Champions League uh, football uh, for the uh, next season. But like I said, it's very essential that we do get the right players to Manchester United uh, this summer because obviously, you know, we want to get the right players because we want to be back to uh, being a competitive um, elite uh, level football club. We need to see vast improvements as well going on um, into this season because last season was very disappointing. You know, we finished sixth. You know, we didn't uh, win um, any silverware uh, last season. That was uh, very disappointing. But, you know, we haven't won any silverware um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons. Um, obviously, 
obviously, you know, I haven't won the Premier League, you know, since 2013 in Alex Ferguson's last season. So that's um, over uh, six years ago now, uh, like I said. But I do believe our expectations going on into this season probably maybe will be to finish in the top four um, and all that. But I think our aspirations in the next couple of seasons, you know, will be uh, that going to the top four. Because I don't think, you know, we're going to... I don't think we're going to win the league at least in the next couple of years. I don't think we're going to challenge them um, in the next uh, couple of years um, and all that. But like I said, you know, we know we have been a toxic club uh, for the last uh, five um, or six years. And the main factor reason why we've been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years is because obviously, you know, we have been mismanaged um, and all that. Um, I do know a hell of a lot of money um, has been uh, spent um, in the club since Ferguson retired. You know, I've had different managers with different uh, philosophies, and obviously not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is still um, in the process um, of currently, you know, uh, rebuilding them um, and all that. So there is um, lots uh, to address um, in the squad. But you know, even though we've been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years, you know, we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. We are one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. Definitely, we've got a fantastic fan base. We are the most successful team um, in England, you know, um, historically. So players, you know, still may be keen um, on making uh, the move uh, to Manchester United um, and all that. Um but um yeah And um, yeah, so um, like I said, um, I think I said you know we need, we need um, at least uh, five uh, new uh, players uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. But like I said, I think Bruno Fernandes. Um, going back to what I said, I think he'll be a fantastic uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. But you know, there's been quite a few other midfielders um, on our um, agenda. I think the vast majority of Manchester United fans, you know, would actually you know like to see uh, James Madison, you know, uh, get recommended in. Now there has been a lot of talks going on um, about uh, James uh, Madison. He did allegedly say you know he would be keen on making a move uh, to Manchester United, but I think he has got reservations. Um, about uh, joining Manchester United because obviously you know we're not in a Champions League uh, footballer for next season. I think it reported that was it uh, earlier on this week or was it last week saying that reportedly you know he wanted to uh, meet up uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, and all that and um, reportedly did say he's allegedly interested um, in a move uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. And don't get me wrong, um, I like uh, James Madison um, a lot. You know I think um, he's a really really um, good player. Um, obviously he's had a year of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Obviously last season was his debut season in the Premier League. Uh, with Leicester last season he was involved in 14 goals he also created uh, more chances uh, than any, than, uh, any other player um, in the Premier League I think he played about 36 games uh, for Leicester um, in the Premier League you know, uh, last season so he was a uh, very very impressive uh, last season um, obviously he's only 22 uh, years um, of age um, he's a uh, primarily um, attacking uh, midfielder um, obviously you know, he's got four years left on his deal with Leicester Leicester got him from Norwich uh, last summer for around uh, £20 million uh, pounds. obviously he did have a good couple of scenes um, in the Championship you know, uh, with Norwich I think quite a few teams have been tracking him you know, since he was a teenager um, at Coventry because actually, you know, um, you know, James uh, Madison, you know, began be, began um, his career uh, with Coventry um, and all that. You know, uh, progressing them um, up the ranks. He also had the loan spell um, in Scotland uh, with Aberdeen um, and all that. Um, but yeah, it came. I think reports came out about this about three or four weeks ago. You know, saying that Manchester United, you know, we he said we emerged him as a priority target. He said we'd made um, initial contact term um, and all that. But he did say if Leicester, of course, um, are willing to um, offload him, he said you know they wanted um, around uh, sixty million pounds for him. But I think you know we would be more than happy, you know, to pay sixty million pounds uh, for James. Um, Madison's uh, services and all that like I said proven in the Premier League really good at creating chances as he demonstrated last season can score goals can provide and I think he would be fantastic um, in our midfield so I do think you know he'd be a good uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba I think a lot of Manchester United fans you know would like to see you know Yari Tillemans uh, come in I think you know we've also targeted him um, as, a, as a potential replacement uh, for Paul Pogba obviously came out a couple of weeks ago saying that we had rekindled um, our interest um, in Yari uh, Tillemans um, and all that it did basically say you know we'd been in negotiation with his agent um, over getting um, a deal, a possible deal uh, concluded, and you know Yari Tillemans um, is available uh, for um, a reasonable uh, figure. Um, I think Monaco, you know, do rate him at around uh, forty uh, million pounds. He's under contract with Monaco till two thousand twenty-two, but Yari Tillemans has had around uh, five um, or six months um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League because he had been on loan with Leicester since January, and he was very, very impressive throughout um, his loan spell uh, with Leicester. Um, obviously now um, his loan spells come to an end with Leicester. Obviously now um, he's returned uh, to Monaco, but I think Yari Tillemans did confirm he probably will not be, you know, staying uh, with. Monaco uh, next season um, and all that but I think last of them have been in talks of getting Yori Tillemans um, on a permanent uh, deal um, and all that uh, because obviously you know, I think it's an, initially in Leicester's plan you know to you know partner up you know Yori Tillemans al uh, alongside James Madison um, in their midfield because probably Leicester believe you know that they will blend in very very well together they'll complement each other you know really really well <coughs> so Leicester you know want to uh, get him um, on a permanent deal 
Also, Tottenham have inquired about his services. Also, we're doing all that Manchester City have inquired about his services. But only 22 uh, years of age, I think, primarily an attacking box-to-box uh, -box midfielder. Can um, also, you know, play him as an attacking uh, midfielder. So, yeah, Manchester United, of course, um, have been in there for him. Obviously, Sean Longstaff from Newcastle. Um, I do believe, you know, I, well, I'm hopeful we can get um, a deal um, over the line for him. Obviously, he got reported out. Um, he got reported about uh, Sean Longstaff, uh, was it, uh, last week. Uh, you know, saying that we was close to agreeing around the £25 million deal for him, um, and all that. Um Obviously, he's only had 21 years of age. Obviously, you know, last season was his first season in the senior squad uh, with Newcastle um, and all that. He initially began his career uh, with Newcastle. Obviously, also had loan spells with Kilmarnock um, and Blackpool. Didn't play the remainder, um, uh, well, didn't play the last couple of months of last season, you know, due to that he sustained a knee ligament injury, you know, back um, in March. That ruled him out for the, you know, last couple of months um, of last season um, and all that. But he does say, you know, Manchester United um, are also in uh, for uh, Sean Longstaff. I think, actually, you know, primarily um, a box to box uh, midfielder um, and all that. So, yeah, so many. Um, midfielders um, on our current um, agenda. We was in for Tanguen Dumbele, but obviously no, Tanguen Dumbele is no longer um, on the equation now. We was in for Adrian Rabiot, but again, Adrian Rabiot um, no longer um, on the equation. Um, but yeah, we've been in there uh, for so many uh, midfielders because, you know, it's very imperative, you know, that we do get um, a replacement for Pogba. We get a replacement for Herrera. I think we also need um, a holding uh, midfielder because, like I said, Matic isn't good enough. He's too inconsistent. He's aging up. He's too slow. You know, I've got strong, uh, so many uh, strong uh, reservations um, about Matic. Um, you know, with Fellaini left in January and Scott Montomway um, is too um, inexperienced at the moment. So we definitely no need um, a holding midfielder, you know, uh, that's fast um, and tenacious um, and all that. Um, but like I've been saying to you guys, you know, um, about uh, Paul Pogba um, and all that, and like, we do know he's been relentlessly, you know, linked to remove away uh, from Manchester United um, as Paul Pogba. Now we do know it's Real Madrid and Juventus, of course, uh, that are battling out uh, for um, his services. Paul Pogba confirmed, didn't he, um, a couple of weeks ago? You know, he told their reporters um, in Tokyo that he's seeking for the new challenge um, and all that. Obviously, you know, he publicly um, admitted this, you know, for the first time, and obviously, you know, he said um, he wants to leave uh, Manchester United, and he did even say he was willing to uh, go um, on strike, you know, to force a move away uh, from Manchester United um, and all that. So we do know. For quite some time now, that uh, Paul Pogba's first choice preference um, has been uh, Real Madrid, and we do know uh, his first choice preference um, has been uh, Real Madrid, and we do know his likely destination um, has been uh, Real Madrid. You know, uh, for quite uh, some time um, and all that, because obviously Paul Pogba is one of uh, Zinedine Zidane's uh, main uh, priority uh, targets um, and all that. But at least in the last couple of weeks, he said, you know, like you know, Juventus um, are interested um, in re-signing Paul Pogba um, and all that, and it did basically confirm uh, the other week that the Juventus director travelled to London, you know, to hold negotiations with Manchester United, hove the possibility um, of re-signing Paul Pogba. It also said that Juventus um, have been, uh, been in negotiations uh, with his um, agent, uh, Riley Ola. And the Juventus director was basically you know, explaining of how much you know Juventus love uh, Paul Pogba because you know, Paul Pogba you know, did have uh, four good years um, in cheering um, and all that. You know, he exceeded their um, expectation levels and all that, but hasn't really replicated this form since he did uh, make uh, the return uh, to Manchester United. Obviously, we paid £89 million pounds for him. Obviously, our most um, expensive sign. I know he hasn't really been the fundamental player um, as we all thought him mean, would have been, but I'd still say he's worth... Um, uh, it, it, you know, probably around 140 um, or 150 million pounds. But the problem is, you know, we've put a huge transfer fee um, on Paul Pogba and, you know, the fee seems to be problematic um, at the moment, you know, especially uh, for Real Madrid. But I think, you know, Juventus wouldn't be able to afford, you know, Paul Pogba um, outright. So I think if Juventus had to get him, I think they would have to offload one or two um, of their um, essential players, uh, you know, to fund the move uh, for Paul Pogba um, and all that. But like I said, uh, I think from Paul Pogba's uh, preference now, he, um, he's uh, keen um, on making the return uh, back to her uh, chairing. But Juventus have uh, done really good business you know so far um, in this window I do believe that they have uh, got um, a budget um, and all that but they have done really really good business in this window I think they've got Matty Stillet or they're getting uh, Matty Stillet um, or I think they've actually got Matty Stillet I haven't read up about it lately um, I think they have got um, Adrian Rabiot um, on the board obviously you know, they've already got um, Aaron Ramsey uh, from Arsenal obviously you know, they've got Cristiano Ronaldo last summer um, and all that so they're doing really really good business um, in this window um, are you went but I just don't think they'll be able to afford uh, Paul Popper um, outright um but like I said, you know, for quite some time, you know, it's you know, it's been his likely destination um, has been uh, Real Madrid. Obviously, you know, Real Madrid have, themselves have done good, good, good uh, business so far in this summer transfer window. You know, they've got uh, five players um, on the board. I think they've spent uh, nearly uh, three hundred million pounds um, of Real Madrid. Um, obviously, you know, they, they obviously paid uh, one hundred and fifty million pounds uh, for uh, Eden Hazard. But we recently indicated anyway, you know, that Paul Pogba is not uh, for sale because obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how much of an imperative player he is. But it did say, you know, we was willing to accept a bid in the region of around them um, one hundred. 
150 million pounds but it was initially in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plans you know to actually build a Maasai Dam around uh, Paul Popper uh, but there's been a change of Sweeney like I said because now obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to sell Paul Popper to help the club generate funds and uh, rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that um, so basically now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, wants to work in the, um, selling and all that but Real Madrid have said you know they will not pay um, up to um, 150 million pounds obviously it came out uh, quite um, a few weeks ago saying that Real Madrid were willing to offer his Gareth Bale um, in a transfer offer for Paul Pogba and all that um, but Real Madrid have basically said you know they will not pay um, up to um, 150 million pounds and uh, potentially Paul Pogba still got two years left on his contract uh, with Manchester United uh, with an option uh, to extend it by further year and he's on around uh, £290,000 a week obviously reports uh, came out uh, last week uh, saying that you know we was willing to offer Paul Pogba a long term contract you know worth it to around £500 grand a week you know to obviously you know, convince him uh, to stay um, at the football club um, and all that um, but I, I, I find this, you know, uh, quite pointless, if I'm going to be uh, quite honest. You uh, came out about, uh, was it uh, three weeks ago, saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was willing to offer him the captaincy in a bid, you know, to uh, convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club. But we do know Paul Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, has been in the process of finding Paul Pogba a new club, um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of uh, months. Um, obviously, you know, he has uh, been uh, working uh, really, really hard um, on that Um as his uh, current um, agent. Um, obviously, Paul Pob was subject to a lot of transfer speculation last year, you know, based um, on his uh, poor relationship uh, with Jose Mourinho. Um, obviously, there was talks about him going to uh, Juventus uh, last year um, and all that. There was also talks about him, you know, going uh, to Barcelona, you know, back in January because Paul Pob had a really bad uh, relationship uh, with Jose Mourinho and Paul Pob actually got one of his best wishes, you know, when Jose Mourinho, you know, got uh, sat there from the club um, and all that. Um, obviously, Paul Pob at the club has won the Europa League and the League Cup. Obviously, you know, that came um, in his second season uh, with Manchester United but you know we've seen glimpses of Paul Pogba's best form you know we mainly saw it in that three month period you know when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, was uh, the interim uh, manager and all that you know um, you know, Paul Pogba was in scintillating form in that three month period and we mainly saw the best of Pogba when Ander Herrera you know was currently playing so that just proves how much of an impact you know, Ander Herrera made um, in that midfield because he was freeing up Pogba um, and all that and um, yeah so uh, we saw the best of Paul Pogba um, in that uh, three month uh, period but I do believe it will be beneficial if we get rid of him because it will help us with our rebuilding process and of course um, it will help us uh, with our transition but very imperative that we do uh, currently uh, get um, a replacement for him. Uh, like I said, we do know Eric Bay, uh, sorry not Eric Bay, uh, that um, you know um, David De Gea is going to be staying now. We do know, obviously, now that one matter, of course, now um, he's going to be uh, staying um, at the football club. So, Romelu Lukaku, now I think we've definitely got to get rid of uh, Romelu Lukaku because um, he's uh, one of the uh, problematic uh, players um, at Manchester United, um, as you um, all know. Now, I've been updating you uh, a lot, quite, quite, uh, quite a lot of times, you know, about what's going on uh, with Romelu uh, Lukaku um, and all that because we do know he's you know being relentlessly you know linked uh, with move uh, to Inter Milan so obviously more things um, has updated him um, about it you know uh, this week um, obviously he did confirm um, on Tuesday that Lukaku's um, agent you know was in Milan it did say he'd held uh, talks uh, with Inter Milan um, and all that because Lukaku's agent you know he's working very very hard you know to get Lukaku's move to um, Inter Milan uh, completed because according to Lukaku's agent you know he said Lukaku wants to leave Manchester United and he's basically said his agent that Inter Milan of course um, are still you know trying to work on the sign uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku but obviously Inter Milan are struggling to generate enough funds you know to meet that £75 million uh, valuation because we've basically said you know we want £75 million for him so basically you know we're looking to recoup the majority of the money that we did pay for him from Everton a couple of years ago because obviously we paid £75 million obviously there were £15 million um, add-ons um, included which did potentially you know rise to around £90 million. and obviously he's got three years uh, left um, on his contract still uh, and he's on around uh, £250,000 a week um, at Manchester United um, and all that so Inter Milan are struggling you know to generate um, enough funds so potentially a lot of reports uh, came out uh, yesterday and I think you know this was coming uh, from Sky Italy you know, and they were basically you know, saying that uh, reportedly Inter Milan uh, have, come, have, uh, have orchestrated something now now reportedly you know, they want to get Romelu Lukaku um, on loan uh, for the next uh, two seasons so it did say Inter Milan will uh, uh, pay um, a £9 million pound loan fee you know, to loan Lukaku out uh, for the next uh, two years um, and all that and um, then it did say there's an obligation to buy then uh, at the end of the loan for around uh, £54 million pounds. But potentially, it's more than like it's more than likely anywhere Manchester United there will currently uh, turn this down because you know I doubt you know I doubt you know we'll basically you know wait for the majority of the money um, in the next uh, couple of uh, seasons um, and all that. But it did say you know they will you know they want him on loan for the next two seasons. They'll pay us nine million you know to get him on loan for the next two seasons. Then there's an obligation then to buy for a further fifty five million pounds. So in total, that adds up to around uh, sixty three uh, million. But I think more than likely you know Manchester United them um, of course uh, will uh, turn uh, this down. But I do believe you know the fee is problematic 
Celtic for uh, Inter Milan. Um, but I do believe Lukaku um, has agreed everything with Inter Milan, um, except uh, the fee. And obviously, Inter Milan have been negotiating with us over coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee. So Lukaku has agreed the personal terms. Uh, he has agreed the personal terms uh, with Inter Milan. I think he's agreed a deal worth around £180,000 a week um, and all that. But everything's been agreed, you know, um, except the fee. I think his contract's even been confirmed. I think he's signed a five year deal with Inter Milan. So he, he will be under contract with them um, until 2024. But obviously, you know, they've not yet, you know, come to um, an agreement on a fee. But obviously, Antonio Conte knows how imperative this is This is for him, you know, to get a deal over the line for Lukaku. Because obviously, it's Antonio Conte's number one uh, target. Obviously, you know, Lukaku is eager to play um, under Antonio Conte's guidance because probably Lukaku believes he'll flourish under Antonio Conte's guidance. Obviously, Lukaku recently described uh, Antonio Conte um, as one of the uh, best uh, managers um, in the world um, and all that. But obviously, like I said, you know, reflecting back um, a couple of uh, years ago, this is when Antonio Conte was manager um, of Chelsea. You know, he wanted uh, Romelu Lukaku um, at that point. But obviously, you know, he ended up uh, making uh, the move uh, to Manchester United. But like I said, Lukaku's been at Manchester United you know, two years. Don't get me wrong, his pedigree is very good in the Premier League. You know, his ratio is very, very good um, and all that. But you do know that I've got a strong uh, reservations um, about him. But he's been at the club a couple of years. Um, he scored 42 goals in 96 games um, in all competitions. Lukaku was exceptional um, in his first season there with the club, but um, enjoyed um, a difficult uh, second season there uh, with Manchester United. Because obviously Lukaku um, under Jose Mourinho, obviously, you know, was a uh, first choice um, and all that. So he was first choice um, under uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, but since Mourinho left and Solskjaer got recommended in, um, obviously, you know, uh, Romelu Lukaku um, has found himself a uh, service uh, to requirements. And obviously, we do know that uh, Marcus Rashford um, has been a uh, first choice um, ahead of uh, Romelu Lukaku. So I do believe that Lukaku um, is reluctant, you know, to play a, um, a backup uh, role uh, to uh, Marcus Rashford. But like I said, you know, the reservations I've got about Romelu Lukaku, you know, he's uh, too slow, you know, he's not really, really good in, um, in the air, you know, he hasn't really got that endless potential, you know, he isn't reliable enough, you know, to get uh, enough of them uh, runs in behind him and all that, so I do think it will be be very beneficial if we can um, offload him, and obviously we do, obviously if we do, uh, you know, sell uh, Romelu Lukaku, obviously, you know, we are going to currently you know, need um, a replacement for him. Obviously, in Timland, um I've offered us Mario Cardi um, in exchange uh, for Romelu Lukaku, and like I said, you know, I would like Mario Cardi um, at Manchester United, um, um, obviously, you know, Inter Milan basically, you know, want to get rid of uh, Mario Mercadio and all that. Obviously, Mario Cardi has had six good years there with Inter Milan, and obviously, he has spent the majority um, of his career um, in Italy. And his stats um, are very, very impressive. His, his, his stats are very impressive. His, uh, his, his goal scoring pedigree, you know, um, is very, very good um, and all that. I think he scored 111 goals in 188 games uh, for uh, Inter Milan, so that is a uh, very, very um, impressive. He is um, only a uh, 26 uh, years in victory. He's more or less uh, the same age um, as Lukaku because obviously, uh, Lukaku. Um, he's 26 but Cardi's still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him obviously you no, know, hasn't played um, in the Premier League um, as yet he is Inter Milan's uh, ninth highest top goal scorer um, of all time but Cardi enjoyed a difficult time uh, with Inter Milan last season uh, because obviously Inter Milan have increased and become frustrated with him I think he also uh, lost uh, the captaincy you know back um, in February you know did uh, Mario Cardi but we need someone who can lead the lines we need someone who can bring us uh, them goals um, and all that because last season that was the problem you know wasn't scoring enough goals you know wasn't ruthless enough, ruthless enough um, in front of, um, of goal um, and all that but I do believe, you know, Mario Cardi, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution, you know, to deliver them goals uh, that we do need. You know, don't get me wrong, I've got some reservations um, about, you know, some of his touches concern me, um, some, you know, his defensive contribution and that uh, concern me, concerns, but he's an efficient finisher, he can lead uh, the lines um, and all that, and he's got that um, endless potential, and, you know, obviously, you know, Lukaku hasn't, you know, currently got this, so I would like to see, you know, Mario Cardi, you know, coming um, as part of the deal. Um, Obviously, Inter Milan um, have tried um, offer, offering us um, Ivan Perisic, obviously, um, as part of a deal for Romelu Lukaku, plus they offered us cash, but obviously, you know, Manchester United had turned this down because obviously we do know that Ivan Perisic term is no longer a Manchester United target. He was on turn target under Mourinho, but he's no longer uh, now a Manchester United uh, target, um, Ivan Perisic. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, you know, Lukaku, you know, can make uh, the move uh, to uh, Inter Milan. Uh, but there's been quite a few players, you know, who could uh, replace uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku, uh, like I uh, currently um, said. There was news coming out, uh, you know, uh, yesterday, as I actually, you know, did give you um, an update on, um, in regards to Patrick Emrick Aubameyang uh, from Arsenal. Now, potentially, uh, this came out, I think, uh, last week, and this was uh, actually, you know, stemming from Andy Goldstein, who was a presenter um, of TalkSport. And, you know, he did basically say, you know, that Manchester United um, are interested in signing, you know, Patrick um, Emrick um, Aubameyang um, and all that. But I was reading their uh, reports up about this uh, story uh, yesterday, and it did reportedly say he uh, that Aubameyang has said yes, uh, he has said yes, 
yes to, to a transfer uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer um, and all that. Uh, do I look at it ultimately? I don't think a man, you know, will uh, come to uh, Manchester United. I just think basically, you know, it is uh, the media, you know, speculating. And I think for the majority of this story, you know, the media um, are justifying uh, their existence um, on this um, and all that. But reportedly, it says that Bamian reportedly, you know, wants to uh, join uh, Manchester United this summer. I do believe that Arsenal probably um, are open, you know, to currently uh, selling him because obviously they haven't got, um, you know, they haven't got, you know, a big uh, budget uh, this summer. It said reportedly Arsenal have only got around 40 or 45 million pounds to spend uh, this summer um, and all that. So obviously, you know, Arsenal will want to offload, you know, um, Bamian um, and all that, you know, to help them, you know, generate funds and obviously, you know, help them uh, rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that. Oh, yeah, but I really, really like um, Bamian um, a lot. Um, obviously, I've always liked Bamian, you know, especially uh, during um, his Dortmund days. Um, he is uh, 30 years of age. He has got uh, two years uh, left um, on his deal uh, with Arsenal. I don't think he will be uh, signing um, uh, a new contract uh, with Arsenal. Um, obviously, you know, Arsenal got him um, uh, back in January 2018. I think Arsenal did pay a record, a club record fee of around, was it, uh, 56 uh, million uh, pounds um, and all that. I think since his arrival um, at Arsenal, I think in the Premier League, he's, um, how many, I think he's made about... Um, I think he's made about 49 um, appearances um, and scored uh, 32 uh, goals um, and all that. So he's got his goal scoring pedigree, you know, is uh, really, really good. Um, he is um, a pro proven, you know, central uh, striker um, and all that because he is predominantly a striker, um, is a Bamian. He can also uh, play out wide, so he can play as a wide forward, so he can play on the left, he can play on the play on the right, but he's actually, you know, predominantly um, a striker. Um, he's a Patrick um, Emmerich Bamian. But I do believe, you know, if he did come to Manchester United and the shock did happen, you know, he would bring his uh, them goals and that, uh, that we do uh, currently uh, need. Um, but yeah, I think he would be um, a fantastic uh, replacement uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku and like I said um And I think, you know, like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is keen on bringing, you know, Patrick um, Emmerich um, and Bayern in because I do believe he would uh, make the sort, I think he would make the sort of similar impact, you know, as uh, Robin Van Persie did, you know, when he came to Manchester United um, in 2012 um, and all that. But like I said, we've done business here with Arsenal over the years. We saw Sanchez coming in January 2018 as part um, of a swap deal, you know, with Mkhitaryan. Like I said, you know, we got Robin Van Persie from then, you know, back in 2012. You could quite frankly say that, you know, he won as a league uh, back in uh, 2013. I mean, Alex Ferguson's there uh, last season season because Van Persie you know was absolutely fantastic you know the amount of goals in that um, he scored didn't he score about 30 goals in that season if I, if I can remember rightly you know where uh, Robin uh, Van Persie and all that but I do believe if we do get a Bamian obviously it's going to be a similar deal similar deal you know to um you know, the Robin Van Persie one, but it did say uh, last week that Manchester United you know, were prepared to spend um, up to around uh, £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his services um, and all that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't believe there's a lot of credibility, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you. Also, Aubameyang has actually you know, been uh, linked to a move uh, to China. So, you know, he's, I think uh, I think he's been offered around 300 grand a week, you know, from the, from a, from a, Chi uh, from a team um, in the Chinese uh, Super League um, and all that but reportedly Andy Goldstein says you know Manchester United um, are interested in Aubameyang last season obviously won the Golden Boot he was uh, the joint uh, top goal scorer alongside Sergio Mane and Mohamed Sally scored 22 goals in the Premier League last season um, in 36 uh, Premier League uh, games but all in all he's made 49 appearances in the Premier League and scored uh, 32 goals um, as a Aubameyang so reportedly he has said yes to a move uh, to Manchester United um, obviously what's been coming out as well in the press um, in the last uh, couple of days um, is in regard uh, to Ben Yedder uh, from Sevilla. Now it does say Manchester United um, are also interested in him, and I think we're only willing to go in for him. Obviously, you know if Lukaku uh, does, you know currently uh, leave uh, the club. Now Ben Yedder, um, he's 28 uh, years of age. Um, obviously, you know he's a highly experienced uh, forward. Um, I think his goal scoring pedigree is supposed to be very, very good. Um, he's a uh, French. I think he made his full international debut was it uh, last year um, and all that. Um, I think his initial release clause um, is around uh, 35 million pounds. Um, he's Ben uh, Yedder he did say Manchester United um, are willing to uh, trigger um, his current um, release clause. I think uh, Wizam. Ben Yedder um, has been at Seville um, about uh, three years. Um, last season, I looked, I looked at some of his stats from last season and he scored them around, was it 30 goals, provided 11 assists in 54 matches uh, for Sevilla uh, last season. He is under contract uh, with Sevilla um, until 2021, so he's got two years left on his deal, but he's been there three years. Sevilla got him back from Toulouse in 2016 uh, for around uh, £9 million uh, pounds, um, and all that. So he does say Manchester United um, have been uh, quite um, about um, his services. So there's quite a few players on our agenda you know, who could replace uh, Lukaku. Obviously, Obviously, you know, Paul Dybala from Juventus, of course, um, has uh, been on um, our uh, current um, agenda. Um, 
But yeah, you know, a bad man, you know, if, if he came to Manchester United, you know, that would be um, absolutely fantastic business by Manchester United um, and Ed Woodward um, and all that. But I don't believe it will happen. I don't believe there's a lot of credibility um, in it. I just feel like I said, I just think it's the media, you know, speculating and justifying their existence on the majority of that story with a on coming to Manchester United. I don't see it happening, to be quite honest with you. But if I'm proven wrong, then I'm uh, currently proven wrong. I still say he's got at least a couple of years in a man, but he is aging up now, obviously. You know, he is uh, 30 uh, years um, of age um, and all that. Um... Uh, like I did say, you know, but uh, I always said, didn't I, you know, I'm very... Uh... I think we need to address that right hand side. We have got a right back in now, but like I've been saying to you quite regularly, I'm very skeptical of Manchester United. You know, bringing a right winner in this summer, we do need a right winner, but I'm very skeptical. You know, of us, you know, currently bringing one in, and you know, there has been uh, quite um, a few uh, winners um, on our um, agenda. Like I said, you know, we've, you know, there's been the rumours going on about Jaden Sancho again, saying that you know we could revive um, our interest in Jaden Sancho if Paul probably you know does uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, this summer, and obviously the club are basically orchestrating on you know generating the funds from Paul Pogba's departure, then putting. That um, of course, um, on Jaden uh, Sancho, but Jaden Sancho, I think, is totally out of the equation. I don't think we're going to get Jaden Sancho this summer. Obviously, that's been uh, confirmed. Jaden Sancho confirmed it himself. He's set to remain loyal to Bushy Dortmund um, at least uh, for another season. Also, Bushy Dortmund have confirmed, you know, he's still a uh, part of their plans um, and all that. But we do know Jaden Sancho would be the obvious candidate for the winger for that wing position because obviously, you know, he's primarily um, a winner um, anywhere. Um, I think he can play centrally, but he's primarily um, a winner, like I said. But Jaden Sancho was the club's number one priority target, you know, for the very, you know, for quite uh, some time, should I say. You know, obviously, he was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's top priority target, you know, back um, in the January transfer window. We do know Bushy Dortmund were demanding um, an extortionate amount uh, for Jaden Sancho. They said they wanted £100 million at the time, but it did say Manchester United you know, were willing to pay uh, that £100 million uh, valuation um, and all that. Uh, but like I said, with Jaden Sancho, he's a very, very good player. He's obviously had experience of playing um, in the Premier League. So I said if he does come back to the Premier League, it will rejuvenate his career, take his football and career to the next level. It will create a better platform for him. It will help him uh, with, with his uh, developing uh, process um, and all that. So I would like Jaden Sancho to make the return uh, to the Premier League, but he's been playing his trade for Bushy Dortmund um, uh, for, for the last uh, a couple of uh, seasons um, and all that and he has uh, done uh, really really well obviously you know Bushy Dom did get him from Manchester City you know back in was it uh, 2017 um, and all that Bushy Dom you know got him for around uh, 8 million pounds the main factor reason why I left Manchester City because obviously uh, due to a uh, you know irregular game time um, and all that you know ne never was guaranteed first team football um, and all that and this is the main factor reason why I did uh, leave uh, Manchester City um, so he's had experience of playing in Manchester but he's under contract to Bushy Dom and um, until 2022 but I think Ole Gunnar Sol I did like uh, did like the prospect of linking Jaden Sancho up the likes of Martial um, and Rashford because I do believe you know he would have blended in um, our attacking line really really well. He can score goals, he can provide. You know he's also really really good at creating chances. Um, he is um, only uh, 19 uh, years um, of age, but he did say you know we would rekindle our, well we could rekindle our interest of course um, if Paul Pogba leaves uh, the club. But I think our hopes have ended you know of uh, bringing Jaden Sancho in, and the main factor reason why this is because obviously you know we failed to qualify uh, for the Champions League uh, for uh, next season. So yeah, uh, there's been quite a few winners on our agenda, you know, like I said, you know, there's been a lot of talks about Nicolas Pepe going on, you know, he did say, you know, we could actually, you know, go back in uh, for Nicolas Pepe uh, from Lille, um, I've, I've, I've got... Um I'm very sceptical, you know, of Nicolas Pepe coming to Manchester United, you know, to be quite honest with you. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he'll probably end up making the move to Inter Milan or Athletic Madrid, if I'm going to be quite honest with you, especially according to recent reports. You know, I think they're, them two are considered the favourites uh, to get the player's signature. Allegedly now Inter Milan are preparing to put a bid in for him of around their uh, £80 million. Pounds. As I was reading up uh, the other day, I think they've already lodged a bid in for him, for him of around their uh, £54 uh, million. Um, obviously, by he's in, he's, you know, a lot of teams have inquired about his services, though. Um, obviously, you now by Munich have been in there for him because they're looking for a player for Arjun Robin and Frank Ribéry. Uh, Liverpool have obviously not been in there for him, but according to recent reports, Liverpool are no longer um, interested um, in the player. Obviously, no, Arsenal have been linked to him since, like, what are the January transfer window, but I think now, actually, no, Arsenal have opt op opted um, out of um, the race. Um, obviously, no, Manchester United um, are in there for him. I think also PSG and that um, are in there for him. So, quite a lot of teams have um, been inquired um, about um, his services um, and all that, but uh, we do know it's imminent he's going to be leaving Lille. Still remains fully uncertain where he will be playing um, his trade uh, next season because the Lille chairman confirmed about six weeks ago he made uh, the admission saying that Nicolas Pepe will be leaving, you know, uh, Lil uh, this summer um, and all that. Um, I think Lil do value him um, at around uh, seventy million pounds. But like I said, he's the obvious candidate for the right win for Manchester United um, and all that. Um, very, very uh, good uh, player. You know, can score goals, can provide assists. Really, really good at that. Also, really, really good um, at creating uh, chances. Um, so far, has spent the entirety of his career in France. He has been at Lil uh, two years um, for two seasons. He's been there. Uh, you know, he scored thirty-seven goals in seventy-nine appearances in all competitions uh, for Lil. 
Lille. That's a very, very um, impressive um, of course. Obviously, last season, they scored 22 goals and provided 11 assists. So, last season was the revelation uh, for Lille. And I still think he's got uh, three years uh, remaining um, on his contract uh, with Lille um, and all that. But I do believe if Nicolas Pepe comes to the Premier League, it will be the next step for him. Um, and, of course, um, it will uh, rejuvenate um, his career and all that. And he's uh, only uh, 25 uh, years of age. So, he has still, obviously, you know, got um, a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. So, like I said, you know, Manchester United's them have been in there for him. But Duncan Castle's come out with his story. Uh, was it about four um, or five weeks ago? And, you know, he basically, you know, uh, said, it might have been longer now, uh, but he said, you know, Manchester United had made initial contact with Lille. He also said Liverpool um, had made initial contact uh, with Lille uh, over the possibility um, of signing, you know, Nicholas uh, Pepe um, and all that. But, yeah, like I said, quite a few teams have been in there for him. Um, I think, actually, from his own preference, he wants to uh, make a new two PSG, does uh, Nicholas Pepe? Obviously, Neymar's linked to a move uh, to, P uh, uh, linked to, a move, uh, to uh, Barcelona um, and all that. And, obviously, you know, if Neymar does go to make a return back to uh, Barcelona, Obviously, PSG would see Nicolas Pepe um, as the adequate uh, replacement. Um, and so, like I said, there's been quite a few winners on our agenda, but I think the likes of Nicolas Pepe and Jaden Santo would be a much better uh, solution uh, than Gareth Bale um, and all that. But I think we're okay on that left hand side. I don't think we need to address that left hand side. Like I said, you know, the majority of our attacks seems to be coming from the left hand side. And obviously, we've, we've obviously you now got Daniel James in. And obviously, you know, I know he can play on the right, but he's supposed to be uh, more effective from that left hand side. Um, is Daniel James. You know, we've got Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw's done really, really well uh, for Manchester United um, and all that. Very very, very reliable, um, of course. I think we are um, okay um, on that current uh, left hand side. Um like I said, I think we definitely need um, a central defender. You know, we need someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line. I think the vast majority of Manchester United fans have said, you know, we we'll probably uh, need uh, two uh, central uh, defenders because obviously we know Smalling's too inconsistent. Obviously, we do know that uh, Phil Jones, um, of course, um, is too um, inconsistent. You know, Smalling and Jones have been two long serving players at the club. You know, Smalling's been here nine years. Of course, uh, Phil Jones have, um, has been here um, eight years um, and all that. And it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving them two new long term contracts because they're no longer good enough, like I said, you know, to rep represent uh, Manchester United. United um, and all that. So like I said there uh, has been quite a few central defenders um, on our um, agenda. Obviously I did give you the news uh, yesterday didn't I um, in regards uh, to Harry Maguire um, and all that Manchester United now um, have pulled um, out of the race uh, for Harry Maguire you know based on the huge uh, transfer fee that Leicester um, have currently uh, put on him. We've basically been notified by Leicester now now that reportedly you know, uh, Harry Maguire you know, will cost them um, around um, £100 million. Pounds. So it did basically say Leicester want um, around £90 million up front you know, with £10 million um, in add-ons if they are willing to uh, sell him and that. And this Initially, it did say, you know, Leicester uh, wanted um, around uh, £80 million pounds for him um, at the first term and all that. Uh, but I, like I said, he's not worth 80 90, 90 or £100 million. Pounds, um, he's Harry Maguire, you know, to be uh, quite honest with you. But we do know it has been Manchester United and Manchester City that have been uh, battling out uh, for um, his services. It did say earlier on this week, and it's been coming from quite a few media outlets, but I saw it in talks but and it did say Manchester City are set to sign Harry Maguire uh, sometime uh, this week. It did say City are set to get him for the world record fee um, of £80 million. Pounds. Obviously, you know, this would make him the most expensive defence in world football ahead of Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk who of course Liverpool paid £75 million pounds for and it did even say City were willing to um, offer him around uh, £280,000 a week now potentially uh, negotiations have hit a stumbling block you know, between Manchester City um, and Leicester because obviously you know, Manchester City um, are reluctant you know, to pay um, up to £80 million pounds, and obviously you know, they're definitely not going to pay um, £100 million pounds for him and all that I think City initially did say you know, the value Harry Maguire um, around £50 million pounds, but it, I think at, at the most City um, are only willing to pay um, around 60 or 65 uh, million pounds uh, for um, his services um, of course but Harry Maguire has confirmed from his own preference he wants to make the move to Manchester City he has basically you know, uh, confirmed this because obviously Harry Maguire wants to rejuvenate his career you know, take him his football in her career to the next level and obviously you know, he's keen on playing under Pep Guardiola's guidance because probably Harry Maguire believes he'll flourish um, under uh, Pep Guardiola's uh, guidance um, and all that but Leicester looking at ultimate Leicester don't want to sell him this is the main fact the reason why you know, they've priced him out of the transfer market and this is why of course uh, they are uh, demanding um, an extortion amount for him but um, he did confirm the other week you know we was confident you know we could beat Manchester City to the signing um, of Harry Maguire you know it did say we was confident we could outbid uh, Manchester City to his services because at that time I think we was willing to offer more uh, than Manchester City but like I said Harry Maguire um, according to the media anyway um, has got no interest um, of coming out to Manchester United um, he's been relentlessly linked to a move to Old Trafford though like I said you know we, we, you know, we tried getting him there last summer um, and all that but we didn't get his number one targets last summer and the main fact the reason why we didn't get his number one targets last summer because the board went back in the signs that Jose Mourinho you know, wanted to recommend her to come in and all that but yeah uh, Harry Maguire was one of the players that Jose Mourinho wanted last summer but obviously I think Leicester said last summer you know, they wanted around was it 70 or 75 million pounds and obviously you know, we was not willing to uh, currently uh, meet that and all that so the rumours have continued to persist since, persist since last summer linking Harry Maguire uh, with move uh, to Manchester United um 
And uh, yeah, so if he was obviously you know to uh, go to uh, Manchester City um, and all that, you know, obviously you know he would be playing alongside John Stones. You know, he would also you know be playing alongside uh, Laporte um, and all that. Um, obviously, I think City probably would consider offloading not Mendy. You know, if they do get Harry Maguire in, obviously City are seen Harry Maguire um, as a replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company um, and all that. Um, like I said, you know, he has uh, been uh, one of our uh, main uh, priority uh, targets. Um, Harry Maguire's been at last of a couple of seasons. Um, obviously, he's made 76 appearances in all competitions. Um, I think he's scored... Um about five goals is it or something like that but 76 appearances in all competitions 69 of those appearances um, have come um, in the Premier League he signed a new long term contract with Leicester last summer so he's under contract with them till 2023 Leicester did pay £17 million to him, uh, from Hull City you know, um, a couple of uh, years ago because he did serve a couple of years with Hull he also had a loan spell uh, with Wigan and I think he actually you know, began his uh, career um, at Sheffield uh, United and he is 26 uh, years um, of age he's British of course um, and he's obviously still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him and I do believe if Harry Maguire did come in you know he would you know, blend in alongside Vic Lindelof um, in our back line really really well because I think his defensive abilities are good he shows that ability to play out from the back he's also a good um, in the air um, he's Harry Maguire but he's definitely you know, not worth um, £100 million pounds, you know, without a shadow of a doubt you know, he's uh, definitely you know, not worth um, £100 million uh, pounds, um, and all that um, but yeah, it has been Manchester United and Manchester City that have been, you know, be battling out for him. But now, based on the huge transfer that Harry Maguire have put on him, uh, sorry, that Leicester have put on him, you know, this actually, you know, make, this may make, uh, you know, Harry Maguire, you know, remain um, at Leicester, um, of course. Um, obviously, there's been, you see, the ops also, you know, have been on um, our uh, current um, agenda. Um, and all that. Maybe quite a few Manchester United fans um, are keen on seeing, you know, Issy Diop uh, coming. Because obviously, you know, looking at it ultimately and looking at it from a financial point of view, you know, Issy Diop um, is, a cheap, is a cheaper solution than Harry Maguire. He's also a cheaper solution than Colour Barley uh, from Napoli. You know, he's also, uh, you know, a cheaper solution from Rafael Varane and that uh, from Real Madrid. Because obviously, he was in for Rafael Varane um, at one point. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a cheaper solution. I think West Ham, you know, did basically say, you know, they want um, at least um, around £60 million. Pounds. You know, some reports, you know, were saying, you know, they wanted around uh, £75 million pounds, uh, for ACA Diop because I don't obviously think, you know, West Ham, you know, currently you know, want to sell uh, ACA Diop. Um, ACA Diop obviously has had the year of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously, last season uh, was his first season um, in the Premier League, you know, over West Ham. I think he played around 33 games of West Ham last season in the Premier League, and I think he played about 37 games um, in all competitions, or was it 38 games um, in all competitions? Um, obviously, West Ham got him uh, last summer from Toulouse for around uh, £22 uh, million. Pounds. He signed a five year deal obviously he's got four years uh, left um, on his deal uh, with West Ham he's 22 uh, years of age I do presume he's very good in the air because um, he's, he's um, uh, 6 foot 4 so he's uh, very very tall I think he's also you know a um, very very good um, athlete but I think Manchester United um, have been in for Issy Diop um, at least um, last couple of weeks but I think Issy Diop is actually keen on making uh, the move uh, to Manchester United as he reported out a couple of weeks ago reportedly Manchester United have had a £40 million pound bid or was it a £45 million pound bid uh, turned down for him um, and all that uh, plus we had offered uh, Phil Jones um, as part of the deal, but obviously, you know, in, you know, West Ham um, and Dinsley, you know, uh, turned uh, this down. I think we've also we're also planning, you know, to offer around another 45 million, and we're also willing to give West Ham the choice between Bay um, and Rojo, you know, as obviously a part of a deal of us, you know, getting um, Issy a deal. But I don't think, you know, West Ham, you know, will be uh, willing to go along with this. Reported out last week saying that, you know, West Ham wanted um, Anthony Martial um, in exchange uh, for Issy a deal. But obviously, we do know that Manchester United, of course, um, are willing, willing to uh, go um, along with that. So I do believe now, you know, he, he's one of our priority targets. Um, I don't think Colour Ball is coming in, that's not going to happen. Obviously, the lit's gone to Juventus. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of Manchester United fans maybe would like to see Missy um, Diop uh, come in. Um, but um, like I said, yeah, so I need to see, we need to see Vastin Pumich now going on um, into this season. Uh, like I said, hopefully it works out um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because I love him a lot. He was a great player for Manchester United uh, for 11 years. Um, obviously, he hasn't really got the experience of managing, you know, not to the highest level and that's something you know, that does uh, currently uh, concern me. But I have to say, we can't, you know, I don't want us to sack him because we haven't got the structure, you know, of course, uh, to keep uh, sacking our uh, managers um, and all that. So I hope, you know, it does uh, basically, you know, work out under him. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, like, on the channel. Um, if you do, consider uh, subscribing, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.